their seats. I understand there were lots of conversations, but please will the meeting come to order. Thank you. Uh, the meeting is back in session. Uh, it has been brought to my attention that there was a phone ringing earlier, uh, so I'm going to remind everyone to please silence your cell phones and your other, I don't think it was your ear, but you know, that. Uh, I'm going to ask everyone to please make sure to silence their cell phones and their other noise making devices. Yes, and if you get a call that you need to take, please leave the room. Okay. The item before us is item D6, short title, That Ticket Has Been Punched. It can be found on page 8 of your agenda, and we have set a debate time of 8 minutes for this. I will recognize Jo Van at the podium. Jo Van Ekren, pronouns she and her. The purpose of this proposal is to ensure that no series can um, become eligible on the same work more than in more than one year. And the reason this occurred, discussion on this occurred, is because there's actually a series which has in the past appeared on the ballot for that category, um, which had a work published in the UK one year and then published in the US the following year. Now according to the novel rules, it would still be eligible in the second year but if it gets on the series ballot based on publication of that novel in the first year, we cannot allow it to appear on the series ballot again the following year because it has added more words with essentially the same uh, novel. And before anybody rises to move that we amend this to say something about language, language was specifically admitted from this, emotion, this motion because even if it's published in another language, it is, and it adds to the eligibility so that it is able to be on the series category. If that book is published subsequently in English, it cannot be used again as part of the eligibility to be on the series category if the series was already a finalist for that entry. Thank you. That was a speech in favor. Is there a speech against? Uh, Kate Seeker at the podium. Secor, she, her pronouns. My specific objection to this is that it introduces an inconsistency into the Constitution about how we handle works that are published in multiple countries or in multiple languages. It seems unreasonable to me that we're going to say, oh, if it's a standalone novel, that's fine, but if it's a series entry, somehow that doesn't count. So I understand the idea behind it, but I find the inconsistency troubling. Okay, that was a speech against. Is there a speech in favor? Terry, at the podium microphone. My name is Terry Neal, and uh, my pronouns are she, her. Um, I disagree with Kate. Um, what this does is, if a series makes the final, based on the book that was published in the UK, this amendment is to prevent it from making the final the following year when the book is published in the United States. So it's already made the finalist list once, so that is not inconsistent with what we're doing with novel. Thank you. That was a speech in favor. Is there a speech against? Um, I'm going to recognize uh, you. I'm sorry, I don't know your name. William? Chandra Orasvari, my pronouns are she, her. Um, I move to amend the motion by adding the words in English after any installment published. Uh, notwithstanding the comments by Joe Fan, I do think that um, given the Worldcon voting membership, that if a series has had volumes that were previously published in a non-English language that the translation and publication of those works into English is a significant enough change from the perspective of voting membership that they ought to be able to 
add this series to the ballot again based on that new uh, information. twice based on the same work, even if it's the same work in two different languages. Thank you. That was a speech against. Is there a speech in favor? I will recognize the PRK up the microphone. One moment. if a uh, series is being I mean, originally published in another language and you know it makes the ballot early on in the series after a few works it is then you know continued to be published it uh, has new works out they are not translated for a year or two it is quite possible for a work that was available in another language when it first made the ballot to not be available in English for you know, another year or two and that work can substantially change the nature of that series and make it uh, eligible uh, to be voted on. So I strongly support this amendment. Okay, that was a speech in favor. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, I'm not great of telling how much time has okay. passed. So, uh, is there a speech against? See none. Is there an additional speech in favor? Dave Wallace, the microphone. Yeah. Dave Wallace, um, he, him, and I'm just going to note that if you have, it, it's really hard to mix word counts in a foreign language with word counts in English, so I think it's much more likely that if the, pub, the series was published originally in a different language, that it would qualify for the ballot initially just based on those portions that had been translated into English. And therefore, it is very likely that words newly available in English would not have counted towards the original word count and therefore should be considered as new extensions to the series. That was a speech in favor. Is there a speech against? Josh McCann hold up at the podium microphone. Joshua Grundle, T. Hem. While I appreciate and agree with the intent of this amendment, it causes the overall result to be inconsistent. We should um, have uh, things go, if we are saying that um, a given series as extended has to stay in the same language, we should do that rather than say that you can nominate it to things that can qualify in another language and then re-qualify in English again. Thank you, that was a speech against. Is there a speech in favor? Ben Yalo up at the podium. Ben Yalo, he, him, etc. Um, we already have lots of inconsistencies dealing with a bunch of special cases. We've got special cases for uh, what happens if some work gets 
into the, a series with uh, an extension for limited availability. We already have other interesting peculiarities. I see no reason to argue against this simply because it adds another perverse edge case. Our Constitution is full of perverse edge cases, and we worry about them. Okay. That was a sp Oh dear. That was speech in favor, right? <laughs> I didn't mark it down on my little sheet. Okay, that was the speech in favor. Um, okay, uh, is there a speech against? Seeing none, is there additional speech in favor? Okay, we will move to a vote on the amendment. Uh, so to remind everyone, the amendment is to insert in English after any installments published. If you are in favor of the amendment, please raise the hand. Thank you. If you are against? I have no idea, so we're going to have to do a certainty. Uh, the sergeant at arms will remind you what to do if you don't remember. Does everyone remember how we do this? Yeah. Or does anyone not remember how to do this? <laughs> yes, okay, sir. Terry, will you please explain? All right, so what we're going to do is when the chair asks uh, if you agree you will, uh, with, with the amendment, you will rise or raise your yellow card. And as I point to you, you will uh, say the next number. Uh, we're going to ask everyone to say a number, and you will say the next number, and then either lower your card or sit down. Any questions? Okay, one moment. Okay. Uh, all those in favor of the amendment, uh, I'm going to wait until the, you're able to find a seat so that there's not a lack of clarity. Sorry. Uh, all those in favor, please stand or raise your card. One. Two. Four. Five. Six.
You can all vote down. Those against? And the motion passes. Okay. We are now going to move on to item D7, 5 and 5, on page 9. I'm going to let everybody know it is currently 1225. We need to uh, be done and like done, done, like not just now leaving the room, but done at 1250. So I am hopeful that we can get through D7. Kate doesn't think we can. Motion to adjourn, Mr. Chairperson. Okay, there is a motion to adjourn. There's second. A second. Uh, although, it's not debatable or amendable. Oh, it is. Yeah, you're right. It's been a day. Okay, is there any debate? Uh, Todd Dashoff? May I move that we take one item out of order instead? Um, you can't. However, the body now knows you want to do that and can use that to inform their voting decision. Uh, those, yes? I forgot how much time we gave for this. Uh, five and five has ten minutes of debate. No, that's a very relevant question. Thank you. Um, okay, those in favor of adjourning for the day, please raise the hand. Thank you. Those against? And the motion fails. Uh, Todd, if you would like to make your motion to take something up, now would be the time to do it. I have a mic rather than go up on your Blue microphone. I dash off he, him. Moves to take D8. Second. Okay, there is a motion to take up D8. That's going to be worse. It's got less time. Okay, so I'm going to take that as an objection. <laughs> All those in favor of taking up D8, please raise the hand. Thank you. Those against? I thought it would help. Okay, I'm going to say that the motion passes, and if somebody wants to appeal the ruling of the chair, they can. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> the item is D8, short title, no deadline for nominations eligibility on page 10 of your agenda. We have set eight minutes of debate for this item. Um, Joe, were you the maker of the motion? No, you are. Okay, sorry. I hadn't quite gotten there on my agenda yet. So do you wish to speak to it? Then please come to the podium and do so. Hello, business meeting. My name is Nicholas White. My pronouns are he, him, and I was the administrator of the Hugo Awards two years ago, and I'm again the administrator of the Hugo Awards last year. Two years ago, I said a silly thing to you. I said, the silly thing that I said to you was that it would be better to move the deadline for qualification to vote in the nominations phase of the Hugos from the 31st of January to the 31st of December. Uh, the reason I made that proposal was because we were considering a number of potential amendments to the Constitution at that point, one of which was the, the proposed three-stage process for nominations. If that had gone through to facilitate the time scale, it seemed to me, as the administrator at that time, that it was important to move the deadline back to the 31st of December rather than the 31st of January and give people another month in which to, uh, in, for, for the process to work. Um, my experience now, having been the administrator twice, is that in fact having any deadline at all is somewhat counterproductive. Um, it caused a great deal of, uh, the 31st of December date is particularly bad because it's a point when people are not really concentrating very much on Worldcon stuff for the following summer. It's very difficult for the incoming Worldcon to run a marketing campaign by your membership now to get nominating rights, as had been the case when the deadline was the 31st of January. And from a technical point of view, it turns out actually to be easier to allow people who buy memberships after the deadline, whenever it is, to nominate right up until nominations close, than to impose a cutoff at, at some earlier stage. Um, I admit that there is an issue here. We had a problem with entryism in past years. We may have a problem with entryism in future years. Um, basically, I think we shouldn't be running scared of what the bad guys might do to us. But we should try and run the best awards in the best possible way. Um, for Worldcon's past, present, and future. 
um, I commend this amendment to you. It will make life an awful lot simpler for the people who are actually administering the awards. Thank you. Okay, that was a speech in favor. Is there a speech against? Recognize Terry at the podium microphone. <coughs> My name is Terry Neal, and I use she, her pronouns. Um, with all due respect to Nicholas, who I have an immense amount of respect for, um, I have been the Hugo help desk person for two Worldcons, um, and we don't get a lot of people emailing uh, in disappointment. We do get some, uh, where they try and get into the nominations after the deadline. We are still facing slating. The nebulas were slated this year. It is not a problem that has gone away. And I think if we want the um, best possible Hugo Awards, we need to do what we can to discourage slating and allowing people to buy memberships right up until the nomination deadline is uh, not going to discourage slating. Thank you. That was a speech against. Is there a speech in favor? Um, Ira, at the podium microphone. My name is Irel Dandra, pronounced they, them. Um, my argument is economic. Uh, the holiday season, December 31st, um, is a time of uh, economic hardship for many, um, and they will not have money available to buy memberships until January 31st. Thank you. That is a speech in favor. Is there a speech against? Um, I'm going to recognize Joe Van putting microphone. One of the arguments made for this when it was proposed was that because of the increased administrative strain um, and the proposal, this proposal was intended to relieve that strain. Part of that strain was caused by the entryism. We have a lot of people still recruiting nominators on Twitter and that December 31st date is keeping that entryism from happening right up to the <coughs> nominations deadline. If we remove that, we're going to have a lot more of the slating as Terry mentioned. Furthermore, the Christmas issue with finances is only a problem for people the first year that they buy a membership. In subsequent years, if they vote inside selection, they, have, they already have their membership long before Christmas comes around, and it's not a financial hardship. The other part of it that really concerns me is that by removing this barrier, we're essentially saying, Go ahead, go recruit whoever you want, people who don't care about Worldcon, whose only interest is in nominating a favorite author or work, and I would like the, the Hugo Awards to remain awards given by Worldcon members. Thanks. That is a speech against. Is there a speech in favor? I'm going to recognize the cast in the back. Up at the podium microphone. Or do you need a ruby mic? No, I'm okay. 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 I'm Kathy McMahaffey, I use she, her pronouns, and that was just, Joe, I respect your perspective on that considerably, but I buy my membership in January because I don't have funds in the summer to do site selection, and I, this is my first Worldcon, I don't do site selection. Um, I end up buying my membership, and yes, I can vote on either end for nominations, but you know what? I'm going to recruit as many people as I can to vote for the Hugos because I believe that the Hugos are the will of the community. This is one of our things that we do as a group. I have been voting in the Hugos now for 10 years, and I'm, so I always get a supporting membership. And I'm going to recruit as many of my friends who go, wait, I can vote for the Hugos. That on Twitter is the thing I do, and I am proud of it. And the fact that you're saying that recruiting people to vote for the community's awards, these are not given by Locus, these are not given by World Fantasy, these are given by the community. And 
or best inoculation against the puppies is having people who are opposed to them to vote. Yeah. That was to be in favor. I will remind the body that while applause and affirmations are allowed, they do come out of the debate time for that side. Uh, that was a speech in favor. I'm going to let the secretary finish. Is there a speech against? Okay, I'm going to recognize Mr. Pine. Up at the podium microphone. Mixed chairperson, I move that this proposal be amended by adding a sunset clause for an automatic revote on the 2024 World Hunt Business Meeting. Sorry, Martin Pine, he, him pronouns. Is there a second? Second. Okay, the amendment has been seconded to add a sunset clause. Due to time, um, we're going to ask the head table, because that, I mean, that's, we have to get the wording of, of the sunset clause. Um, do we believe that sunset clauses are standard enough wording that we can add it in and not wordsmith it right now? 2024. 2024? Okay. Okay. Is the body clear on what a sunset clause does without needing to wordsmith it again, the exact wording? Or is there anyone that is not clear? Okay. Are you unclear on the I'm sunset clause? Unclear <laughs> for the specific date or just 2024. So basically, yeah. what was this? It will be automatically. Okay. Yeah. If it, it will, this change will go away after 2024 unless the body makes it stick. But only if it's that machine. Yeah. PRK has it. It will, it will, sorry. Yeah, I phrased that wrong. My apologies. Apparently I'm on there. PRK, he, him, a uh, point of inquiry. Can you sunset a removal from the Constitution versus an addition? Yes. 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 Uh, Kate? Oh. Point of parliamentary inquiry, Mr. Chairperson. Uh, right. Uh, point of parliamentary inquiry, Mr. Chairperson. Uh, can we clarify exactly what the effect of the sunset clause is in, in terms of it go, just going poof? <laughs> yes, it will go poof. Uh, no. Uh, so I'm going to answer that parliamentary inquiry by saying that it is 1240. Uh, and so I am going to, so that we can just have the wording ready to go for the amendment. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I am going to uh, call a second order of the day and uh, say that we are adjourned and we will be taking this up tomorrow and we will have the complete proper wording for the sunset clause for everyone to look at tomorrow. Uh, before you go, I want to make sure everyone everyone knows what's happening tomorrow. So we're going to be taking up this amendment um, and then we're going to be finishing D8. Um, the items we have left to discuss are D7, D9, D10, D11, and D13. The maker of the motion for D13, I hope, I hope we don't need to be here on Monday, but if we do, the maker of the motion for D13 cannot be here on Monday, so, yes, I'll get there, sorry. Uh, the maker of the motion of D13 cannot be here on Monday, so I will be uh, with the unanimous consent of the body tomorrow, and I'm just letting you know, I will be asking that we take up D13 after we have completed D8. Um, there is, yes, there is a, um, an, an additional resolution. Um, it is also titled B4 because we have two B4s tomorrow. We have the B4 that is suspend five and six that will be taken up after D7 is completed. Um, and because the, there was a standing rule change and some renumbering, we have an additional B4, we'll call it B, 
four B four B or B five uh, that was distributed today that will be taken up as the last item of business, time permitting. Um, and if the body wishes to take it up, that is what is remaining on the agenda. What about the winner? Well, yes, and site, I meant the after site selection is taken care of, that's what we'll be doing. Sorry for not being clear. Thank you everyone for your patience, and I will see you all here at 10 a.m. tomorrow.